Hi, I'm Andrew Smith, Associate Director of Virginia Farm Bureau's Governmental Relations Department. And I'm Stephanie Talon, Assistant Director for Farm Bureau Government Relations. Welcome to week six of our General Assembly updates. Andrew, what updates do you have for us today? Yeah, I'll mention a few bills, uh, Stephanie. One that I think our members have heard uh, us talk about a couple of times, clutter. Uh, you know, we had concerns with Delegate Ward's House Bill 1778, uh, on clutter, and that would be adding to the the enabling legislation or code section that allows localities to adopt an ordinance to, if they've got problem areas where people have trash on their property, and, and typically these are more urban uh, localities that adopt these type of code sections, but we have seen uh, localities in the rural areas adopt a code section where they can uh, require landowners to get rid of trash. Uh, but, and we've run into some problems with similar legislation on vehicles, but what this did, it added mechanical equipment uh, in the definition of clutter that was created in there. And we were concerned about uh, on farms, you know, when people have farm equipment out there, uh, you know, they may have a bush hog that they don't move for a season or so. Uh, you know, somebody may consider that clutter under the ordinance and start complaining to their county. And that's just an example. But we were very happy that uh, the Senate uh, Committee on Local Government did uh, listen to our concerns and uh, spoke with the patron. And they all accepted our amendment to exempt uh, land zone for agricultural or working farm operations. So very happy about that. It did uh, pass committee unanimously after the well. The amendment passed unanimously, and then it got out of committee, and then went to the floor, and uh, it eventually passed. Uh, it had a little trouble on the Senate floor, but it did pass. Now it goes back to the House. But our concerns have been addressed. Uh, we have no more position on it, and we're appreciative that our concerns were heard. So we're very thankful on that. Um, one bill that um, you know I really like, uh, Senate Bill 1270 from Senator Cosgrove. We did support it last year and it passed until it got to the uh, House floor uh, and that's where it died. But this year, uh, so far it's uh, been going along. It got through uh, the Senate, it got through um, the House committee and it's gone now headed to the Senate floor. And that is a bill dealing with quick takes when it talks about condom nation cases, the, the, about the notice that goes to the landowner on cases such as that in those type condemnations. And it really deals with what has to be in that notice to the landowner. Uh, you know, right now, merely code sections can be referenced in the, the letter to the landowner, not really explaining the, the true rights or you know, what are their options. Uh, this bill uh, lays out some language that the minimum language that should be in that uh, notice to the landowner. So we're very hopeful so far, you know, it's making it way through. Hopefully when it makes it to the House floor this year, it will pass. Uh, we are very supportive of that. Uh, the last one that I'll mention uh, is one that Ben's been working on that we've talked about several times is minimum wage exemption for farm workers. Uh, and that is House Bill 1786. We do have an action alert out there that a number of our members and people in the industry have responded to. Uh, you know, we've been saying that it hadn't been placed on the committee docket in the Senate yet, but it is on Senate Commerce and Labor docket on Monday. So uh, next week this time, we'll have a, more of a report on that, but it is on the docket. So anybody responding to those uh, action alerts we're very thankful and share it with their friends and encourage them to do that as well. Stephanie, you know, we're right here in the end of February and, you know, I always think about tax season. I handle most tax uh, issues for Farm Bureau. Uh, Martha has been working on some bills dealing with taxes related to best management practices. Can you give us a little bit of update on those? Sure. I just want to briefly mention Senate Bill 1162 and House Bill 1763. The Senate version is being carried by Senator Emmett Hanger and the House version being carried by Delegate Tony Wilt. And these would create enhanced tax credit for some agriculture, the implementation of some agricultural best management practices, including a resource management plan 
Um, these are moving forward very well. Passed the, the House and the Senate. We continue to support them. Um, a similar bill, Senate Bill 1163, again by Senator Hemet Hanger, is creating a tax credit for the purchase of conservation tillage and precision agriculture equipment. Um, again, supporting that bill as well as it's moving forward and passing the House and the Senate. These are again just bills, and we appreciate the patrons' constant um, efforts to help farmers in this in this area. Bills to to help producers provide more assistance and encourage producers to implement those best management practices associated with improving water quality. Um, and again, we appreciate the efforts of the patrons and um, are supporting these bills as they move forward. And speaking of water quality, I, I want to mention. Hopefully, everyone saw the the video on Facebook and social media that President Fryer did this week with the Ag BMP survey that's going out. Um, again, if you remember us mentioning this earlier in some of our updates, this is to capture those best management practices that aren't might, might not be reported um, officially, those that are being done voluntarily by producers. We wanna make sure that we capture that information. So there is a survey going around um, in cooperation with Extension and Sloan Water and many other agricultural organizations. Again, encourage our producers to fill this out if you are farming in the Chesapeake Bay watershed very crucial that we document all of these practices that are taking place so we know what's being done and how all the good work that producers are doing to meet our water quality goals by 2025. So I encourage you to jump on Facebook and go to the Farm Bureau page and look for that video by President Pryor and share it so we can get the word out so as many farmers as possible can complete that survey. Yes, Stephanie, I've been very encouraged that there are partners in the industry. A lot of their organizations on their social media accounts have been sharing the link and encouraging their membership to respond to that survey. Very important. Uh, so very excited that uh, producers across the state are, and especially the Chesapeake Bay watershed, excuse me. Uh, I've been filling out that survey and I hope more of them do. Absolutely. And I know it's, it's a tough time right now this week with all the bad weather we've been having with the, the ice storm. I know there's power outages across the state. So, um, you know, people can't get to it right now. Totally understandable. We're thinking about all of our farmers out there who are, are struggling to take care of livestock right now. So we're thinking of you and appreciate all that you do. It's a tough job. Though. I know it does water cups on a day like this, I know. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next week.